we're good. <laughs> hey, good morning, Fit Fam, on this beautiful Sunday. Do you have a special event coming up and are looking for beautifully crafted platters? Or are you just wanting to use up some fresh fruit presented beautifully? Today's guest is owner of Fruit by the Slice. He's been happily married for 10 years, has a seven-year-old daughter named Haley, enjoys teaching cooking classes, and loves to cater to small intimate events. Please welcome, dun dun dun, Mark Sobra Venus. <laughs> hey guys, thank you for having me today. Yes, thanks for coming on the show, Mark. For sure, yeah. All right. So you're owner of Fruit by the Slice. Yes, I have. Um, it's been open for a little over three years now. Three years now, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what do you, what are your platters like? Uh, so my platters, uh, they come in two different sizes. Okay. Uh, so basically they come in a half size and a full size, um, depending on what you're catering for. Um, I do do custom smaller ones. Okay. Uh, but I do also do larger ones. Larger ones. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And what kinds of fruits, um, do your platters, um, come with? Okay. So generally my, um, sorry, my basic fruit selection would be a pineapple, cantaloupe, uh, watermelon and strawberries. Okay. Um, but uh, I do add different things to it um, upon customer request, client request. Got it. So today I have uh, raspberries, uh, blackberries, blueberries, um, I have kiwi, and I have oranges. Okay, wonderful. All right, and Mark, can you tell us how to select fruit? Because I know for me, when I buy watermelons, my watermelons are, don't taste very good, right? Some of them are very watery, some of them are tasteless. How do you know which fruit to get? Okay, uh, so for a watermelon, uh, what I do typically, um, I purchase all my fruit from Costco. Okay. Costco is always the best for yes. me. Yes. Um, definitely because everything is larger right. in scale, um, but as well too, they're very, um, well, uh, sorry. Uh, so they're very... Uh, it's always fresh too, right? Yes, it's always fresh. Uh, it's um, and it's it's reliable. Right. Yeah. So for watermelons, what I generally do is I look for a yellow spot. Okay. Uh, that's one sign right here to say that it's going to be tasteful. Right. Um, another thing too for me, I like to go with oblong shaped ones. Okay. Why is um, that? Uh, just because there's more fruit for me. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, and weight is a huge thing. Oh, weight. Yes, weight. The heavier it is. Mm hmm the redder it'll be. The really? I didn't know that. You yeah. know, I never, I, I always thought people just bang on the watermelon. Like, and that's why? A, and Is that's that a, a myth? Way, yeah, honestly, um, it's it's to each their own, right? Okay. Uh, I, I see that all the time. Yes. When I'm rifling through watermelons at Costco, um, I have people come to me and they're like, how do you choose them? Mm -hmm. um, and where can I find this? And right. I'm like, I don't work here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they always... They always think that I actually work there while right. I'm rifling through fruit. Yes. And it's like, I don't have a name tag on. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Yes, yes, yes. And I thought, like, I mean, so for webbing, right? If you turn the watermelon over, yes. are you supposed to look for webbing? This yeah. has a little bit of it. So it has a little bit of it. I tend to actually just uh, look for the yellow spot. Just for the yellow, yellow spot. Yellow, okay. orange spot. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I find if it's too round, yes. um, it's light, uh, then you're looking at, um, you know, not being ripe enough. Got it. And being that pink. Okay. Yeah. That's helped yeah. me a lot because the last 10 watermelons I've purchased were all round. They weren't the oval shape. So I think I'll choose a, an oval shaped watermelon. And the heaviest. And the heaviest yes. one too. With, yeah. with the yellow spotting and webbing. Yeah. And okay. then another thing too, um, when you're looking for pineapples, uh, you want to look for ones that have the yellowing of the eyes. Okay. So you see right here. Yes. Another thing too is if you pull out... So these ones are browning. I know that this is ripe because yes. of the color. Yes. But another thing too would be pulling out the, the tips. What do you mean pulling it right out? Right now, it's kind of hard, oh, but you okay. can take it out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Gosh, yeah. That was hard. Um, but uh, definitely if, if it's uh, under ripe, it yes. will be all green. Okay. Uh, and it'll be actually firm, really okay. firm. So this one right here, you're looking for. I can feel for. it's nice and tender. Yeah, yes. exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then kind of going into melons. You're looking at a little bit of softness to it, but mm -hmm. definitely firm. You want to make sure you look around uh, the whole cantaloupe, whether it's a cantaloupe or, um, sorry. Honeydew? A honeydew, okay. yes. You're making sure that there's no spots of softness. No spots of softness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And then for berries itself, it's very visual. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at the package. Right. You're looking upside down kind of thing and right side up and making sure that there's not 
too much molding. And what about oranges? Oranges? Are these oranges? <laughs> yeah, these are oranges. This, um, <laughs> these are oranges. Yeah. They don't look like oranges. <laughs> yeah, they kind of look pear-shaped. <laughs> yes. But definitely these oranges, you want to look for firmness as well. Firmness, okay. Yeah. yeah. And what about kiwis? Kiwis? Uh, so kiwis are kind of tricky. I actually have a funny story. Um, when I was growing up, uh, we used to go to the market, and mm -hmm. my older brother, what he did was he asked me, he's like, check out this fruit. Try to squeeze it as much as possible. <gasps> so I did, yes. and it popped all over my face. Yes. <laughs> and my brother just started laughing, oh my ran gosh. around the corner, uh -huh. told my mom I got in trouble. <laughs> kind of thing. So it was, uh, it was pretty, but now I know what a kiwi is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're looking for that, you know, that same thing as a melon. Right. right. So firmness. But a little bit of give. So, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. So let's get started. Yeah, for sure. So you know, I'm going to wash started. my hands first. Yes, I will do the same as well. Just because you always want to have clean hands. Yes. All right. Okay. And we're building one platter today, Mark? Yeah, so what we're going to do is I'm going to build a half-size platter. Okay. Uh, so it's all in the name. Half-size platter would be half of the fruit. Right. Um, but definitely I have a full-size platter, and that's the full-size. The full-size, okay. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get into watermelon and then um, get into everything else. Okay, sounds So the good. first thing you want to do is we want to make sure that your knife is sharp. Uh, sharpness of knives. I have these knives. I've collected these knives over the years, um, and I don't have any anything fancy, uh, but definitely they work for me, kind of thing. Well, I see something fancy. This is a Jamie Oliver knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got that when I was actually the in-store chef at uh, Sobeys Extra on Pemina. Okay. So what I did there was I taught cooking classes to the public for free. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna get it right into here. So I'm gonna cut this down. All right, so so I'm going to cut off the ends, lop off the ends, like so. And you'll see how red it is, which yes. is really nice. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to cut it right down the middle. And hopefully, there you go. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. There's yeah. no seeds. No seeds, yes. Um, in my opinion, I love working with seedless. Um, because I mean, you know, people that purchase fruit platters, I mean, it's, it's, it's for the kids. It is for the kids. Right? Yes. It's for the kids. So, I mean, having to not deal with seeds is a plus. Well, I'm, my son, if he sees seeds, he'll actually pick out all the seeds and he thinks that, um, a watermelon plant will grow inside of him. <laughs> so I always make sure I have no seeds. Yes. So I'm just cutting this down. Depending on size, I cut, uh, each half into either thirds or quarters okay yep, so I got that so the the most important thing too about um, you know getting ready to make a platter is making sure that you have everything ready so yes. what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut into my cantaloupe and my pineapple so let's get this started here so same thing I'm going to lop off each side or end for safety reasons, right? Yes, of course. Uh, the reason being is that when you're doing this, you want to have a flat side on, oh, okay. on, the, on the cutting board. Right. Uh, so because all things are round, right? So yes. you don't want it to go around. Another thing that you want to um, kind of keep in mind when you're cutting fruit is, um, especially with round fruit, it's round. It's yes. not square, right? Mm -hmm. So my thing with round fruit is you always want to, when you're cutting into it, you always want to cut into the curvature. Okay. Of the fruits. Right. Uh, to get the maximum out of it. I see. Okay. I see a lot of people cut straight and it's just like you're, you're wasting. wasting the fruit. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Gosh. So what, what I do, so when I start, I cut from the top and then I follow the curve. And then going into the second cut, I kind of use the green as a guideline. Okay. And then I cut into and I use it as a guideline. Like there so. you go. So you're going into that. So I'll just do this really quickly here. Well, as quickly as I can. That's actually a great tip. And look, not a lot of waste. Yes, not a lot. Okay. Actually, it's not very messy also. Look at nope, that. No, not at all. Easy cleanup. Yeah. 
And I guess the second step to this would be... Right, let me just, clean your board. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. So looking at the bottom, making sure that there's no green left over from the, from the peel, and then cutting it in half, like so, and then getting out the seeds. So what I do is I use one of these serving spoons from Dollarama. <laughs> nothing <laughs> fancy, nothing fancy whatsoever. I'm just seeding it out. Have you tried saving the seeds of your melons? Uh, my melons? No. Yes, no. I know that it, it actually takes, a, a, I guess, a, a designated zone to actually uh, to grow seeds like this. Okay. Um, but definitely what I find, too, is that uh, most fruit is GMO'd. So, oh, I see. Okay. So, I mean, they're gen genetically modified mm -hmm. so that they don't grow again, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so what, I have an avocado plant at home. Uh -huh. And I've tried for years to do one. And I actually was lucky enough when I used a organic oh. avocado. And so it's growing. It's growing. Yeah, yeah, it's growing. Interesting. Yeah, but it's not going to bear any avocados, but it's definitely nice to look at. Well, I, okay, so I actually saved the tops of um, my strawberries and I put it in soil and water and it was actually growing. Really? Yes. And I did the same thing with cherry tomatoes. It was growing, but I just threw the plant away because my, <laughs> my son was picking at the leaves, but oh, it was okay. actually growing. My cherry plants, uh, cherry tomatoes were pretty tall. There was no fruit on it, so yeah. I think I had to take it outside. But yeah. you know, I was just experimenting. It was just an activity to do. And, and a lot of people do it with pineapple tops. Yes. Yeah, yes. so they do with pineapple. If you want to just... Aspect. Oh, sure. Yeah, yes. for sure. So what they'll do is they'll rip off this and take away the first kind of three layers and okay. put it in some water mm -hmm. and it starts growing. Yes. Yeah. So it's, uh, but I never do that. <laughs> no. Okay. So interesting fact about pineapples. It actually takes, I think, two years for a pineapple plant to grow. Because when I, I was in Hawaii, yeah. um, so one plant would bear one fruit and then that's it. Wow. And it takes about two years. I did not yeah, know, did that. know that. Yeah, no, interesting that, fact. That is, so, you know, I appreciate pineapples more and more often now because of that. Well, they, they had those ornamental pineapples available, at, I believe, Ikea and Verde. And I, I wanted one so badly because uh -huh. they always sell out. Oh, of course, so, yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking maybe I'll grow my own. Well, well just wait two years then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but it'll be fruit of your labor, that's for sure. So what I do for this, um, what I do is I cut my pineapple top. Okay. For decoration. So oh, it, right. for everything that you do, I find that you want a centerpiece. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I do is I use my pineapple top as my centerpiece on my platters. Look at that. That's beautiful. So it looks like kind of like a little Christmas tree. Yeah, it does. But a tropical one, of course. So, and then what I'll do is I'll place it on the platter. And then it'll be my centerpiece, my focal point for That's my platters. That's beautiful. I've, I've never, ever thought of saving the tops. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get rid of this. Okay. One second here. And then going into the pineapple, there's so many different ways that people actually be cut into pineapple. I do the exact same thing as my melons. I lop off the top and bottom. And then I kind of cut into the sides like so. And now, using. Now with um, peeling the the pineapple, is there a certain way on how to do it? Because I know how, how I do it and how my mom taught me, but yes. you don't want to waste a lot of the fruit also. So what do you do? Uh, so basically I do the exact same thing as as, as my melons. Okay. Um, but I do, like my mom taught me this too. Okay. Yeah. Like cutting the diagonal. Yes, the diagonal and then, way. And cutting into the eyes of the yes, pineapple. Yes, yes. I think it's very tedious. <laughs> yeah. But it's for the love of, I guess, your Saving pineapple. Saving the fruit, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But I mean, what I do here is I try to save as much of the pineapple as possible. Mm -hmm. um, the eyes of the pineapple aren't very, very visually appealing yes. when it's on a platter. So that's why I cut right into it. Okay. Um, so, for example, I'm cutting right there. You'll see a, a bit of an eye right there. Um, but I just kind of cut it off. So. Well, it's also faster too. I mean, if you cut it diagonally, it takes such a long oh, time. Oh yes, it's a just it's to a, save a little bit of fruit. Yeah, exactly. So I just kind of cut into it like that, and then just like anything else for this pineapple or for pineapples in general, what I do. Here, give me one second here. Just do that. Always make sure you have a clean surface. Exactly. Work yeah. clean. Yes. 
Yes, that's what I Clean was Clean as you go along. Yes, so cutting into it halfway. I think it's a nice color. You could smell it already in oh, the Oh yeah, it smells very nice fresh. Nice and ripe. And then cutting diagonal cuts. Oh, hold on. Just to take out the core. And do you eat the core? You know what, I, you don't eat the core, but what I've done, because I go through so many pineapples, is um, I, I do infuse water. I was just going to say, you yeah. put it in water, yeah. that's why. Yeah, so what I do is I put it in infused water, <laughs> exactly. put it in the pineapple yep. cores, you know, add a, a different amount of fruit, or a different selection of fruits, mm -hmm. and have it good for myself and for my daughter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. A good thing you say that, because um, pineapple is actually good for your throat. So if you have that tickle in your throat, Drinking or eating pineapple or drinking the juice is actually good. It will help soothe your throat. So nice. Good to know. Good tip, right? <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So I have my pineapple, my watermelon, my cantaloupe. Uh, so if you want to go ahead with the strawberries. Okay. What am I doing? All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to use this little fancy tool here. It's called a tomato shark. So it's used. A to tomato shark? Tomato shark. Yeah. Okay. So tomato shark. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the stem and you're just going to go around and pull off the stem. Oh. So you're, using, you're utilizing all the strawberry. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to do, let's say, a baker's dozen, 13. 13. 13 strawberries. And then we'll, we'll wash them real quick and then we'll go from there. Okay. I didn't know that there was a tool for this. Yeah, it's a tomato shark. Yeah. I always just cut the top off. And then you waste a little and bit. And then I right? wasted, yes. But you know what? It's funny though, because I was watching on Instagram a video and some people were actually, is it, they use a straw to take out the oh, top? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's a good tip too. I've never actually used it. I would probably use a, a bubble tea straw, a little bit bigger. Yes, yes. Uh, but no, I've never, I've never done that actually. Well, but the tomato shark or strawberry shark makes it <laughs> a lot easier. That's for sure. It does make it easier. I don't have this tool, but I'm really loving this. And I, so where can I find this? Uh, you can find it probably at any kind of kitchen supply store. Okay. Uh, I actually ordered it through work, um, so it'd probably be through Russell. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Look how nice the fruit looks, but am I taking out too much? No, no, not at all. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, how much do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two more. You want it thirteen. Yes, <laughs> thirteen. A baker's dozen. <laughs> baker's dozen yeah. is thirteen. Okay. And then I'm just going to set this stuff aside here and then kind of get started. Sure. Afterwards. Well, that was fun. All right. So while I cut, do the first cuts on the watermelon, maybe you can go over here. I'll give you a small little paring knife. Okay. And what you'll do is, I'll show you here. So you'll just cut into the strawberry in half. Mm -hmm. It's fine if they fall apart. Uh, what I tend to do is try to keep them together at the base. I see. So okay. whether I want to do a little Pac-Man. Oh, okay. A little Pac-Man. Or right. I wanted to just split it up and kind of set it aside. Okay. Like that when I'm doing my design. That's mm -hmm. kind of totally up to you. Okay. okay. So, so then, you know, I'll, I'll keep it intact. Yes. Just in case. You can tell me if you want to. And then I'm going to get started oh. on the first part. Okay, not here. that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. All right. So strawberry. Oh, sorry. Watermelon. All right, so I'm gonna do my first cuts here. And how thick should you be cutting it? The sorry, the watermelon. Right. The um, watermelon. I kind of just gauge it on. Uh, I don't know, maybe what a, it looks a like centimeter. A, a centimeter, okay. Yeah, I would think a centimeter. I guess the tough part about this is actually having it as even as possible. Right. I mean, this, I've been doing this for all of my culinary career. I mean, I used to work at Radisson Hotel downtown. And uh, what happened was Christmas time was crazy. And I would have to do four, five, six, six huge, uh, you know, vegetable platters, fruit platters, meat platters, cheese and cracker platters. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I find that anything you do, you know, the, the, that rule of, you know, practice uh, rule of a thousand or a hundred hours. 10,000 hours. It's oh. 10,000 hours. Yes. So you yes. do anything for 10,000 hours, you're going to be good at it. Right? Yes. So for me, 
Um, Did you I've, reach your 10,000 hours? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for a very long time. 18 years? Yeah. yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it to the side like so. Oh, okay. All right. So you have that vision. Making sure that it, each cut is all the way down to the end. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, this is where a long knife comes in handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it over to my platter. And then it's going to be my first step here. Oh, okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim the edge here on this pineapple so it doesn't take too much space on the platter. Mm -hmm. So it'll go into the corner like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe take one piece out. And that's my first step. Okay. And then now I'm going to go into my pineapple. It's funny because my my daughter is always watching me when I do this, so she's like she always asks for. Can she know, help? Yeah, can she help? Can Aww. she, you know, can I have some pineapple? Mm -hmm. Or she's actually we just found out about a year or more ago that she's allergic to strawberries. Really? Yeah, so it's bad oh. for business, <laughs> but definitely no, it's fine. She she makes sure she stands clear from strawberries. So I do my strawberries at the end and making sure that, you know, I, I clean up after myself. Right. But getting it into, you know, just making sure that we're, safety is important. Right, for yeah. sure. Oh, that's too bad because strawberries are so tasty. She loves strawberries Does it make too. her tongue itchy or does, tongue does she itchy, get high? Tongue itchy and she does get hives. Okay. So I, that's why I have to be extra careful when, oh, when I, I have see. strawberries in the house. Yes. Making sure that it's bagged properly. Right. It's, when I'm putting it into a fridge, it's it's you know it's separated completely. Okay. Yeah, and then now I'm going to go into my Your cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. So it's funny that you said that you you used to do these fruit platters for the Radisson Hotel because I actually used to um, have corporate events at the Radisson Hotel and I would always be having fruit platters. So I had no idea that you would be the one yeah, making the maybe, fruit platters. Yeah, maybe right behind I've the scenes. I've done it. I've done it for about five years at the Radisson. Wow. Yeah. No, th that was early in my career. I've been cooking for twenty plus years. Okay. Uh, I'm getting to forty next year. Oh, wow. Yeah, the big 4-0. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started cooking uh, when I was 18. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so wow. 22 years. I can't even believe it. Yeah. So okay, I'm, so then you have your 10,000 hours. Yeah, no, I definitely have my 10,000 hours for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it over here and then place... Oh, I see what you're doing. So then you're having it... Um, what's the word? vertically on the platter vertically so you can and then see kind every of, slice yeah so you see every like, a bit of every slice right you know trying you know you eat with your eat with your eyes right? oh of course yes i mean everything is about visual so i mean my whole business is about visual right right, right. yeah so then i'm gonna do the last piece of watermelon here This actually looks really simple. I think I can do this at home. You think so? I think so, yeah? yes. <laughs> we'll practice afterwards. <laughs> we'll try. Okay, so then you guys can see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, I have people ask me, do you have a machine that you use mm -hmm. for cutting and slicing your fruits? And I'm like, no, no I don't. Your hands. It's all, it's all hand cut. Cut with love, right? Yes, cut with love. All right, so what I'm going to do here. Just gonna... Oh, I see. So you're going to transfer it and have it the other way now. The other way now. Like so. Okay. Look at that. And it will fall. But then again, that's why we use the strawberries. So we'll leave that sitting like that. Okay. For now. For now. And then we'll bring over the cutting board. with the strawberries. So just going to wipe this off real quick here. Yeah, always cleaning as you go. Yes. And then placing the strawberries strategically to fill in the gaps. And then I go on this side. I use larger strawberries to kind of... Oh, to kind of prop it up? Prop it up so okay. it stays in place. Mm-hmm. 
And do you use any toothpicks or anything? No toothpicks whatsoever. Just the fruit. Just the fruit itself. You know what? I'm just gonna take this out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there we it just go. doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? Yeah. We can't just waste the fruit. Of though. course, no, no, no. <laughs> Eat it up. <laughs> And then that would be a half-sized fruit platter with basic fruit selection. And your basic fruit is the watermelon, the pineapple, cantaloupe, and strawberries. Yes, so that's okay. it right there. So now I guess the next step would be me showing you how to make this platter sexy. How to make it sexy. Yeah, okay. so adding a little more fruit to it um, and um, adding a little more Color contrast. Okay. Right. So the biggest one that I find when it comes to uh, color contrast is um, adding blueberries. That would be mm -hmm. my, probably my first next uh, additional fruit that I would, I would recommend to anyone. It just makes everything pop. Yes, it's the right? color contrast. Yeah. So and then what I have is raspberries. Oh, sorry, blackberries, raspberries, and then we have orange and Kiwi. Kiwi. Yeah. So um, before we put these on, um, how about we do this together here? Oh, okay. Yes. And so what I'll do is I'll give you the smaller but sharper knife. Okay. All right. <laughs> and then we'll <laughs> it's always good to be cut with a, a sharp knife rather than a dull knife, if everyone knows that. Look at this um, knife. <laughs> yeah, it's a little little, little knife. So cute. <laughs> uh, but definitely, um, if you get cut with a dull knife, it's it's harder for, for it to For sure, heal. yes. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, so you're going to follow me. Okay. So you're going to hold it from end to end like so. And then you can have it down on the ground. So what you're going to do is, I'll show you the first cuts. So, like oh, so. Oh, I, I cut it down? Okay. Yeah. All the way? Um, you're aiming for middle. Oh, so, okay. So I think this like is so. middle. Yeah. And then you're going to do a second cut like that. Oh, okay. Diagonally. Diagonal, and you're, you're going to uh, make sure that the tips go together. And then you're going to do another one. And then another one, and then another one. Oh my goodness, I think I lost No, you. <laughs> no, it, it's just, it's like a zigzag Oh, cut. a zigzag, okay, yeah, I a see. a zigzag cut. I see, got right. it. Okay. Oh, I know what we're doing. Yeah, we're doing... We're going to cut it in half, right? Uh, <laughs> in half, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll be decorative. Well, it'll decorative. be a decorative one. So then I'm just going to make the end meet here. And I'm just going to wait for Nari here. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it's going to be a little competition here, which was nicer. Okay, this is my very first time No, of time course, exactly. No, no, definitely, definitely. Cutting this. And I think I, uh oh Yeah, I think that's good. Oh, no, I don't think it is. <laughs> All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to open it up and separate it. Oh, look at that. Well, oh, you did good. That's not that, too bad. No, that's not too bad whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, you could work on it. I you could, could probably work put on a it. little, you know, 10,000 hours on it, but no, definitely. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think I need another yeah, for sure. nine. So what I do is I cut them in half like so. So then I'll show you that again. Cutting in half. Cutting in half? Okay. Cut mine in half. Yeah. Oh, I don't think that That's looks okay. very it's okay. nice. The more the teeth, the better it looks, right? Right. Yeah. So then I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm going to place it on the platter, like so. And then I'm going to add some blueberries. Making it sexy. You're making it sexy, yes, exactly. You know, you don't have to put too much. And then I'm going to... Maybe add some blackberries, some blueberries. Oh, sorry. Blackberries and raspberries. Raspberries. And you just keep it whole like that? Yeah, just keep it whole for these ones. You know, and then you're just kind of making that color pop throughout and propping up other fruits as well. So you're totally covering the pineapple, but you know that the pineapple's there. Right, because the top. Yes, exactly. And... Uh, that's pretty much it. I wow, mean, that's you could beautiful. add as much as fruit as you want, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely it's it's to each their own. Right. Right. I mean, I have clients that say I want I don't want any melon. 
whatsoever. So it's like, okay, uh, melon is a big, huge part of it. Right. But let's see what our options are. Okay. Yeah. And so how long would this platter last in the fridge? Okay. Uh, so when I do orders, I like to, depending on how many orders I have, right. what I like to do is I like to prep my fruits and chill it in the fridge at, overnight. Okay. But a platter like this, if it's wrapped properly, yes. Um, what I would do is... It's that perfectionist right here. Um, what I would do is um, it would hold for at least a day, a okay. day and a half, uh, depending on timing of it when it's completed. Uh, but definitely it should hold. If it's, you know, if the fruit's ripe enough yes. and it's not watery or overripe, right. then it should, should hold for at least 24, 48 hours. And how much time, how much notice would you need to um, create a beautiful platter for someone? Uh, so what I like to do is to ask for at least 12, 24 hours. Okay. It gives me time to shop. I, I, right. I mean, a lot of people think that I have fruit just laying around right, kind no. of thing. Uh -huh. It's not like that because, I mean, it, then again, it's, it's about, you know, choosing the ripeness, you know, the, the best fruits, right? Right, right. So if it's sitting around for a very long time, it's not going to be that great. So mm -hmm. at least 12 to 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. And how much would this half platter go for roughly? Uh, so this, this particular one, I would probably say it would be about 45 uh, to 50, depending because of the additional fruits. Right. Um, so my basic fruit uh, selection is the watermelon, the cantaloupe, the pineapple, and the strawberries. Mm -hmm. So that one just alone would be 35. I see. Okay. Um, and what I do is I just add on the cost of the the additional fruit that's requested, mm -hmm. just the cost of the fruit. Okay. I don't give any more into labor. Right. Um, because I'm already making it. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And where can our viewers find you? Okay. Uh, so they can find me on social media. Okay. Um, so fruit by the slice, or sorry, at fruit by the slice on Instagram, mm -hmm. and then they could also uh, find me on Facebook. Uh, fruit by the slice mm -hmm. on facebook and uh all my information is there okay wonderful yeah. well thank you so much mark it was so much fun creating this beautiful platter for sure yes, thanks guys thank thanks thank for you. tuning in i'll see you next week yes bye now bye. so nice <laughs>